kinesiology of cervical vertebral column kinesiology means the study of the mechanics of body movements first let us discuss about the basic anatomy of the skeletal system the skeletal system is divided into two segments that is axial skeleton and appendicular skeleton axial skeleton that you can see in the uh, second picture here the axial skeleton consists of the cranium vertebral column ribs and sternum whereas the appendicular skeleton consists of bones of the upper limb the lower limb clavicle scapula and the pelvis the vertebral column mm -hmm. comes under the axial skeleton system so do we know how many total vertebrae we have in our body we have 33 vertebras where 7 vertebras are in cervical region and called as cervical vertebras we have 12 thoracic vertebras 5 lumbar vertebras 5 sacrums and 4 coccyx so here you can see in the picture the cervical vertebra are just below the occiput and the thoracic vertebras are between the cervical vertebras and the lumbar vertebras thoracic vertebra you can see the color in blue color then we have lumbar vertebras uh, which is a yellow segment here it is between the thoracic vertebra and the sacrum and the sacral vertebra is in green which is between the coccyx and the lumbar vertebra and the coccyx are small the most distal vertebras we have four coccyx vertebra so today we'll be discussing about the cervical vertebra so general parts of vertebras are the body intervertebral disc pedicle lamina vertebral canal transverse process spinous process and superior and inferior facet of the vertebra so these are the general parts of the vertebra the body of the vertebra is in anterior part the pedicel just starts posterior to the vertebral body bilaterally and it continues as a lamina then the lamina come and join to form the spinous process posteriorly we also have the superior and just below down here inferior articulating facet these are the uh, transverse process of the vertebra in be between the body and the anterior arch of the lamina we have the vertebral canal and just below this we can see there is a lateral view of the vertebra so from lateral view you can see anteriorly there is a body of the vertebra we have transverse process just behind the transverse process we have the superior articulating facet inferior articulating facet which is clear in this lateral view this is the lamina which is the continuation of the pedicle and posteriorly we have the spinous process what is the normal curvatures in vertebral column here you can see the cervical vertebra it has convex anteriorly and concave posteriorly whereas in thoracic vertebra anteriorly you can see there is a concavity and posteriorly there is a convexity vertebral column which has anterior curvature as convex and posterior curvature as concave is called as lordosis so therefore we can see the lordosis in cervical region and the lumbar region whereas the vertebra which has concavity anteriorly and convexity posteriorly it's, it is called as kyphosis so we can see kyphosis in the area of thoracic and the sacrococcygeal region So osteology of cervical vertebras we have seven cervical vertebras c1 c2 c3 c4 c5 c6 and c7 so c1 is called as atlas c2 is called as axis so c3 to c6 c3 to c6 they are the typical vertebras that means the structure of these vertebras are identical c1 c2 and c7 are atypical vertebras that means they are unique in their structure
let's find out what are what are the typical structures of typical vertebra that is c3 to c6 the body of the typical vertebra is wide and have a uncinate process so you can see here the extra growth from the body of the vertebras that is typical vertebras which is called as uncinate process the superior articulating facet of the typical vertebras are flat and it face superiorly and posteriorly the inferior articulating facet which is down below it is also flat it is facing inferiorly and anteriorly the spinous process of the typical vertebra is bifid you can see there are two projections at this spinous process the vertebral canal is large and triangular so why the vertebral canal is large the cervical region because the thickness of spinal cord is maximum at the cervical region the transverse process of the typical vertebra has a anterior and posterior tubercle so therefore it is also a bifid the first atypical vertebra is the c1 also called as atlas the atlas has no body the superior articulating facet is concave and it is facing superiorly the inferior articulating facet which is inferior to this structure it is slightly concave and face inferiorly the atlas doesn't have the spinous process it just have a small posterior tubercle which continues sideways as a posterior arch of the atlas so atlas has a posterior arch and the anterior arch so it doesn't have a spinous process the vertebral canal is large and triangular here you can see and the transverse process is large that is the atlas has the largest transverse process coming to second atypical vertebra which is called as axis the body of the atypical vertebra is tall and it is called as dense the superior articulating facet you can see here is convex and it face superiorly the inferior artery facet is flat and it is facing anteriorly and inferiorly the spinous process of the axis is largest for the cervical region and it is thick and bifid the vertebral canal is also large and is triangular like any other cervical vertebra the transverse process has a anterior and posterior tubercle which is similar to other vertebras but the difference here the main difference with other vertebras is the presence of dense which no other vertebra has it similarly for atlas the most unique feature is it doesn't have a body and it is a ring shaped vertebra the third atypical vertebra is c7 the body of the atypical vertebra is slightly hard shaped like a thoracic vertebra the superior articulating facet is flat and is facing superiorly and posteriorly whereas inferior articulating facet is also flat and it is facing inferiorly and anteriorly spinous process is the most prominent in the cervical vertebra it is large and prominent the vertebral canal is triangular and the transverse process is prominent and it may have a extra growth which may be called as extra rib so what are the types of joint that are present in cervical vertebra the first type of joint is called as interbody joint you can see here uh, the body of the vertebra the joint between the body of the vertebra is called as interbody joint in between the vertebral body we have the intervertebral disc next type of joint that is present in cervical and any other vertebral column is called as apophyseal or facet joint so joints formed by the inferior articulating facet of the superior vertebra with the superior articulating facet of the inferior vertebra you can see here the inferior articulating surface of the superior vertebra 
and this superior articulating facet of the inferior vertebra is called as apophyseal or facet joint so this joint is responsible for creating a lot of movement in the cervical region so therefore it is responsible for primary motion in the vertebral region now coming to joints that are present in cervical vertebra the first joint is the atlanto occipital joint it has two joints formed by the occipital condyles and the superior articulating facet of the atlas the convex part of the occipital condyle articulates with the concave part of the atlas so you can see here superiorly there is a convex surface of the occipital condyle which gets attached with the concave surface of the atlas that is superior articulating surface of the atlas second joint that is present in the cervical column vertebral column is the atlanto axial joint it has three joints one is the median joint formed by the dens of the axis dens of the axis and posterior surface of the anterior arch of atlas this forms the osseous ligamentous ring along with the transverse ligament of the axis you can see here the transverse ligament of the axis the transverse ligament and the anterior arch it forms the osseous ligamentous ring which holds the dens in position then it has two lateral apophyseal joint or the facet joint one on the left and one on the right which is formed between the inferior articulating surface of atlas with the superior articulating surface of axis the third joint that is present in the cervical vertebral column is the inter cervical joints it has three joints they are the medial interbody joint that is formed between the body of the vertebra anteriorly and two lateral epiphyseal joints that is on the right and the left the orientation of the facet joint is 45 degree you can see here in the picture it is 45 degree angulation with the horizontal plane so this 45 degree angulation is important while studying the kinesiology of the cervical vertebra